Bill Bender, I hope you're having an awesome Friday, my friend. Welcome to T-Town. Yeah, worn out, man. Long week, a lot of media days to follow. Obviously, it's up here in Charlotte. And, uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah, we're getting through it, and it's good to join you as always. Bill, when do you head home? When do you head home? Uh, this weekend, yeah. Sunday, I'll be flying back. We're doing some office time today and uh, putting in a little time with the, the higher-ups and then going from there. But, uh, yeah, it was quite a week. I, I think, obviously, you guys had a lot to talk about down there in Hoover, and uh, there was quite a bit going on here in Charlotte and, obviously, the back and forth between two certain schools. Yeah, what did you take from that? I mean, Clemson obviously responding to Alabama. We spent a lot of time talking about yesterday between players and Nick Saban. Well, what's your opinion of what's happening back and forth with these two heavyweights? I thought the, the jabs were kind of funny. I, I don't know. I, I, if we're being honest, look, Georgia isn't better than Clemson, and Notre Dame certainly isn't better than Alabama. I think it's a little bit of showmanship between both schools that have kind of split the series here. I did think, you know, Dabo's overall message was about moving on. And I thought Nick Saban's message was a little more about looking back. And there's a danger in that. Now, on one end, it worked last time that he used that to motivate his team and fuel his team. But I think, you know, Alabama's got to move on and move on to Duke and uh, try to get another swing at it. Clemson's really good. And so is Alabama. And I've read Joe Goodman's column down there. And I know people will have, feelings about that but it you know it went pretty hard but Goodman was right I mean right now Clemson is the king and and it's on Alabama to reclaim the throne well no I mean 100 percent I mean listen and and I think it's easier I said this yesterday you know what happens is when you start looking for excuses and you start throwing out excuses you step on somebody's toes somebody gets offended you know a couple of years ago he did that with NFL draft he said you know we had a player that left early he didn't get drafted the third round uh, one of those players was Ronnie Harrison, and he responded. Uh, well, when you look at Mike Loxley, because he made the comment, some of our assistant coaches were looking for head coaching jobs, and when they get those jobs, they don't do what their responsibility is in T-Town. Well, there's only one coach that departed here for a head coaching job. It's Mike Loxley. Mike Loxley responded yesterday uh, via a reporter and said, hey, listen, uh, that didn't make sense. Why would I not want to win a national title? So, you kind of get in trouble when you start making excuses, trying to deflect the attention away from yourself. Well, he did, and, and you know, but I, I think Saban does everything by design. We've learned that by now, and that should motivate the coaching staff he has in there now. I mean, Alabama's had a lot of coaching turnover, but some of that, when you do a good job, there's a lot of opportunity. Clemson hasn't had a lot of coaching opportunity, but that's the way they operate. And I think you can be successful both ways. So, you know, like I said, the back and forth, whether it was Dylan Moses or John Simpson or Paul Feinbaum or Trevor Lawrence, I think it's all showmanship. And uh, honestly, it's good for the game because these are the two superpowers. And if it were stale, it's not stale now, given what both sides said back and forth. All right, Bill, let me ask you about the ACC because, see, this coach talk, you know how it is. You've got to decipher what is really coach talk and what is reality. Everybody says their conference is better than the other one. And, but this ACC, like, I cannot believe the ACC is that good of a league. I don't think it's that good of a league. You've been there. You've heard the message all week. Where do you stand? I think the ACC is a solid conference. It's not as deep as the SEC in terms of what you have to go through every week. I mean, the Coastal, for example, there are a lot of good teams, but there are a lot of good teams that will play in second-tier bowls and sometimes third-tier bowls. Um I think Syracuse is pretty good. I think the elephant in the room with the ACC is probably their second best team plays a half schedule. And I'm meaning Notre Dame, obviously. So when you have that, it, it makes it that much more interesting. But yeah, I mean, the SEC has seven teams in our top 16 of our full season top 25. So yeah, obviously we think very highly of the SEC. I think the SEC has the most playoff contenders. And, and that makes a difference when you look at it overall. Bill, let me go to Dabo just for a couple of minutes. When you look at Clemson, convince me that their toughest game is what? What is their toughest game in 2019 that's on the schedule right now when you look at within within conference? Who is that team uh, that you think can give Clemson all they want? Um, Probably A&M, and that kind of proves your point. That the toughest team on their schedule 
is going to be the Texas A&M Aggies when they roll in there in September. So, uh, but in fairness, I, the reason why I'm pretty much all in that Alabama and Clemson are going to play each other again is both teams have weak schedules by their standards. I think Alabama, if you're picking more than one loss on that schedule, it's, you're being very creative because – I don't see two spots on that schedule where they can lose if they do what they're supposed to do. So, same deal with Clemson. I mean, A&M will be tough. I think the Syracuse game will be tough because it's on the road. But, I mean, when those are your two toughest games, like I said, it obviously speaks to what is pretty much a weak schedule. Bill, let me go to Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh, always entertaining when you talk about uh, getting him in front of a mic. Uh, You've written about it here on SportingNews.com. Jim Harbaugh, Urban Meyer comment, elevates Michigan expectations even higher in 2019. Kind of update us on what happened there in the conversation with Jim Harbaugh. I know we were talking about Alabama yesterday, and we mentioned it as we were going off the air last night. But uh, Jim Harbaugh taking some shots. Yeah, why not? I mean, he, you know, in a podcast with Tim Kawakami from The Athletic, he, he said that Urban Meyer has a tremendous record, but controversy follows him wherever he goes. And, I mean, if we're being real about it, he didn't really lie. So it's kind of a fact, factual opinion, I guess, um, of sorts. But it's also one that, you know, rings of they they went 0-4 uh, against the Buckeyes with Meyer, and now – you're seeing it kind of seems like sour grapes in some ways. So you can look at it both ways. But Harbaugh, very calculated, very confident. Michigan picked to win the Big Ten this year. And, you know, now that he's said the things that he's said, I think it increases the pressure for them to actually go out and do that. All right, so let's take you to the Big Ten for just a couple of minutes. Let me ask you about the Buckeyes uh, for a couple of minutes. When you look at them, are they vulnerable this year under Ryan Day? I don't think they're vulnerable at all. They're going to be very talented. Uh, they, it'll depend on Justin Fields. He's going to have to earn the starting job. I thought whereas Harbaugh created the headlines, Ryan Day kind of went about his business. And you know, that's what he's going to do. He's a very business-like coach, very affable guy, uh, offensive-minded, and that showed last year with the work he did with Dwayne Haskins. And, um, you know, he'll have to be tested in the big games. And, and those pile up over the years. You, you – uh, you got to be tested, and they'll play Nebraska and Northwestern and Penn State and Michigan, Michigan State. So they'll have plenty of opportunities on that schedule to, to kind of earn his big game credentials. But everything else Ryan Day has done to this point from recruiting to kind of smoothing over a controversial season last season has been, you know, top shelf as far as I'm concerned. Hey, Bill, final question. Sportingnews.com, National College Football Analyst. It's Bill Bender 92 on the Twitter account. Bill Bender 92, Bill Bender 92. Connect with him there. Follow him. You can find him all over the place. Sportingnews.com. He does a lot of different radio shows throughout the country. I, I want to ask you just for a couple of minutes here. Everybody's trying to make the claim that Georgia has tightened the gap. Okay, for one, this is the way I look at it. I, I think the gap is still there. I think it's significant between Alabama and Georgia. Have they closed the gap? Okay, I'll buy a little bit, but I'm not buying that that Georgia's the next heavyweight. I think they've taken advantage of an SEC East that's been down. I think Florida's coming. I think Dan Mullen is a much better coach than Kirby Smart. If he can do it at Mississippi State, what you know, or do it Florida, what he did at Mississippi State, they're going to be in Atlanta quicker. I think. I, I just I like Dan Mullen as a coach. Uh, what do you think about Georgia? Are they have they closed the gap? A lot of talent, uh, and they're going to be good up front. I don't know to close the gap. You got to win one. And I saw, you know, you and Drew DeArm and obviously friends of mine and guys I've talked to a lot on the radio had an interesting podcast comment there about the VHS tapes, and I thought that was funny. But I think Georgia's getting closer. But each year that you don't win a national championship when you're close, it starts to take a psychological tool. So this is a big year for Jake Fromm. This is a big year for that offensive line and and Kirby Smart, and they've proven they can play Alabama into the fourth quarter. So as far as a gap, I think the only way you close that gap at this point is you win the game, and they've got to prove they can do that. Bill Bender, I appreciate everything that you're able to do. Always (laughs) willing to say yes, yes, yes. I'll come (laughs) on at Tuscaloosa, sportingnews.com, the hardest working guy that we know on the national level, and I appreciate you, man. Safe travels back to home, and hopefully you enjoy a little bit of Charlotte. (laughs) Get you some good, like, uh, barbecue, some good food over there, and then make the trip back to Ohio, man. 
I will. Thank you so much, Ryan, and I appreciate all you guys do for me in T-Town. And, you know, I saw your countdown. We're going to be here soon, and uh, talk to you again soon. Thank you, Bill. Have a great one, man. Appreciate you. you.